Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm going to show you how to fix a chipped windshield. This happened while driving on the highway. A rock kicked up and chipped the windshield, and on the way home, we got a windshield repair kit to fix this right away. You want to repair the chip right away to prevent it from spreading, because if it spreads, you'll need a new windshield. I'm going to show you how to easily repair the chip yourself. It'll take about 10-15 minutes and cost you about 15 bucks, and we'll be using this kit from Rainex. And if you want to use this kit, I'll put a link in the description to where you could get it, so just check that out. So let's begin. Luckily, the chip is not in front of our field of view. It's off to the passenger side, down low near the hood here. You can see the chip is pretty small, so the kit will work perfect for this. On the box, it shows you all the different chips that could be fixed. The one we're doing today is called a bullseye, but you could do cracks, chips, and stars. So I removed all the pieces from the kit so we could get an idea of what it comes with. We have the instructions, and then it comes with this little piece of cardboard in here as a razor blade. We have our suction cup mount. We have our resin. We have our resin pump that pumps the resin into the crack, and then we have our curing strips. You want to do this job in the shade, not in direct sunlight, and then later on we have to move the car to direct sunlight. Just as an overview of what we're going to do, we're going to mount this right over the chip, we're going to take this plunger, screw it in, and then force the resin down into the chip. So the idea is we're pumping the resin into the glass to fill the chip, and then the resin cures so it's clear and it's hard like glass to prevent the chip from spreading. The first thing we're going to do is open up the razor and we're going to clean the area around the chip. When cleaning the area with the razor, you just place the edge flat against the glass and slide it back and forth across the glass. You want the area above the chip to feel smooth. Now use the edge of the razor to pick out any debris from the chip. You don't want any loose pieces of glass in the chip, so clean it out good. After you clean off the surface and make sure that you clean out all the glass out of the crack, we can move on to the next step. The next step is to affix the suction cup mount here. The thing I don't like about the suction cup mount is it's going to make you want to press hard on the glass. You don't want to press down on the glass because you could make this chip bigger. But at the same time, you need to make sure you press down enough to get these suction cups attached. So just be careful when you're pressing down on the glass. What you want to do is you want to line up your chip so it's right in the middle. And then once you get it right in the middle, you want to press down so that the suction cups stick. The next step is we're going to take our plunger and we're going to remove it so that we just have a resin chamber that screws into the base. We're going to screw this in and as you screw it in you want that rubber surface there to mate with the chip on the glass. So as I'm screwing this down there's a rubber piece that's going to surround the chip. It's going to expand around it and we want the chip to be right in the middle there. You can see it's almost exactly in the middle. That's perfect. You don't have to tighten it too much because you don't want to put excess pressure on the glass. Now we're going to take the resin, take the cap off here, cut the tip off of this using the supplied razor or scissors, whatever you want to use. And you're going to want to use six drops of this resin into the tube here. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now we're going to take our plunger and just screw our plunger in. It screws in and forces that resin down into the chip. You want to do this slowly so that the air could come out as the resin gets pushed in. You also want to pay attention over here because you don't want any resin leaking out. If the resin is leaking past the seal that you created with the glass in the resin chamber, just tighten the bottom part a little to create a tighter seal. Now watch the resin fill the bullseye chip as I tighten the plunger in. Good, and force it in all the way. Now to help air escape, just tap gently around the crack and this will vibrate out any trapped air bubbles that are in the chip and allow the resin to fill the chip completely. And then we'll let the pressurized chamber sit for a few minutes just so it could force the resin deep into the chip. Now we're going to take this off and inspect. So we're going to do an inspection. The bottom of the chip looks really good and you can see right at the top there where that dark spot is. That means that there's air stuck in there so we're going to force more resin in. I'm going to add four more drops. If you put too much resin, it's not a big deal. You just have to clean it up later. One, two, three, four. I'm going to screw this in. Hopefully it'll force that extra air out. So the second time should be a charm. You can feel the pressure. There's a lot more pressure on this one because you don't really have that much of a gap to fill. And you can see it's actually coming out the bottom. So we pressurized it all the way that we can. Just get a paper towel and clean it up so it doesn't get everywhere. It's not a big deal. Again, I'm going to tap the glass to try to get any of that air out. So that is definitely looking pretty good. There are little tiny bubbles. You can kind of see it's black, but it's barely noticeable. 
And since it's not in our field of view, it's not imperative that we get this crack perfectly clear. The clearer the better, but this looks pretty good. And all the resin's filled in that crack, which will prevent this crack from spreading. So after we're done and we're satisfied with our results, you want to grab both the plunger and the chamber, the resin chamber in here, both pieces, and spin them both counterclockwise to loosen it. Some resin might come out, so just have a paper towel ready if you need. Okay, and then we're just going to remove this. You can clean off any resin on here because this is reusable. We're going to remove the suction cups now. And you can see that chip just disappeared. So here's some of the resin that was leaking down from the chip. The chip is right up there and you can see it just disappeared, which is awesome. Now you don't want to touch the chip at all. If you want, get the bottom here and clean up the bottom because you don't want that resin on there. And for the next step, you'll need the resin bottle. So I have the bottle of resin in my hand. I don't know if you can see it, but the chip is right there. You can barely tell. You're gonna get one drop right on the chip, just like that. And then you're gonna take your curing strip and put it right on top. And then you'll take your straight edge and then run it lightly over the top of the curing strip to force out any air. Right over it like that. And then we're gonna go move this into the sun and let it cure for five minutes. Since it's the winter, I'm gonna let it cure in the sun for 10 minutes just because the UV radiation is not as strong. So in the summer, you have more UV light than in the winter. Letting it cure for a longer amount of time doesn't hurt, it only helps. So we just moved the car into direct sunlight. Now this thing is gonna cure nice and strong, nice and clear and also it won't crack any further, so we protect our windshield. In 10 minutes, we'll take the curing strip off and we'll take a look at it. After 10 minutes of being in direct sunlight, we could peel this right off. If the resin is still wet underneath, you can leave it on there. But the resin hardened, so we're good. You can throw this sheet out. The kit comes with plenty of sheets, so you don't need to worry about it. Now you're going to want to take the razor they give you and go perpendicular against the glass. So 90 degrees against the glass. Until the whole area is nice and clean. And you can really see how great this came out. Then you can take a paper towel, wipe down the area. You can use glass cleaner if you have some spots you want to clean up really good. So I have this piece of cardboard here so you can see this better. That is what is left of the crack. You can see it looks really good. You can barely see it's there. I pull back here and I remove the cardboard and it's barely noticeable. You can't see it at all. We'll get a before and after up. Hopefully this video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. And if you're not a subscriber, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button for more how-to videos. The top tip for this video is using my experience. This is the first time I used the Rain-X windshield repair kit and I was actually pretty impressed. Normally I use the Permatex, which is this style. I have two videos. It does come out pretty good on the Permatex, but with this one, you pay 15 bucks and you could do three, four cracks. With this one, it's pretty much one time use. With this one, you could actually create a vacuum and draw the air out of the crack. Then you add the resin and it gets sucked in. But I do prefer the kit we just used over the other kit. So there's a helpful tip from my experience with windshield repairs. Definitely check out those other two windshield repair videos. I'll have the links to them in the description below.